tell our viewers a little bit more about yourself. Okay, um, so my background is um, interesting. I'm actually trained as a psychologist. Um, however, I was doing my training and um, I, um, start, I left because I started a family. And whilst I was on maternity leave, I started writing and I started becoming more interested in politics and I started getting published in some newspapers in Australia and I discovered that writing was better for me than being a practicing psychologist. Um, and I started my own platform because I thought that there were perspectives that weren't being articulated in Australian press and, you know, non-politically correct um, perspectives and I particularly wanted to criticize feminism and I couldn't get published in the Australian media if I was critical of feminism. That's funny that you say that because at least in North America Australia is regarded as a macho place you know and maybe it's the caricature of Crocodile Dundee and maybe we think of it's you know tough guys who tell it like it is what what you're saying is it's it's maybe the opposite? Only within the media culture I would say our our actual Australian culture is quite um, blokey and there's a lot of focus on mateship and you know, if, you know everyday people still retain that kind of culture but um, when it comes to getting published in the media you sort of have to kowtow to what the editors um, prefer and I, in my experience I was sort of blacklisted as soon as I started criti criticizing feminism. I mean, I have to say, I, mean, I, I like your stuff, it's very substantive, but you do not come across as rough or unfair or mean or low blows, like all the criticisms that are thrown at me from time to time. Like you are, I'd, I'd almost say you're a little bit scholarly in your approach. I mean, I've read your work and I've watched your videos. The fact that you would be blacklisted is rather incredible to me because I find your style, if anything, um, painstakingly fair. I mean, I'm a fan, but I like I don't like you're not an elbows out punch in the nose kind of gal. Yeah, that's right. I, I like to focus on ideas, but sometimes ideas can be really threatening to people who, who think they have the moral high ground. So if when it comes to um, uh, issues on immigration or um, perhaps feminism is not compatible with science, people don't want to hear that kind of thing. And I crit so I criticize gender politics for being scientifically illiterate. Um, and, and so so people who, who think that they have science on their side, morality on their side, they don't like to see conservatives who are intelligent, who know their facts, who have some background behind them. They find that very threatening. So I think that's potentially one reason. You know, I, this is a similar thing in Canada and in the United States too. Um, feminism, radical feminism it is really censorious, I think. Can you tell me some other issues in Australia that are sort of these don't touch them, don't break the pack mentality? I want to compare the media debate landscape here with that which I know. M can you list for me a few issues that are sort of, oh, you can't say that down here? Uh, well, people don't really talk about immigration. Um, there's been a crime wave in Melbourne. Uh, from Sudanese refugees, that's not really touched by mainstream media. Um, issues around in, indigenous issues, so uh, anything to do with Aborigines, you have to be extremely careful. Our, we had a cartoonist in Australia who was brought up with charges in front of the Australian Human Rights Commission because he, of a cartoon he um, put forward um, drawing attention to the fact that there is child abuse and neglect in indigenous communities. So that was a huge issue. Um, How did that case, is it still ongoing or was it resolved? He died. Bill Leake died, yeah. You know, we, we, we had, of course, I mean, I myself was put before a human rights commission for publishing some, someone else's cartoons of, of Mohammed. It's so interesting. That's so analogous. Keep going. Well, yeah, so that was, that was a travesty that he was brought up in front of the Human Rights Commission. The case lapsed and he tragically died late last year. And his friends um, have suggested that the stress that he was under during the last months of his life may possibly have control. I absolutely believe that. Hey, if you like that, sign up for my show every day. Click on the screen to subscribe.